Hello, my name is Peter. I'm product owner at Decision Rules. And today I would like to show you how you can create decision table. Let's go. Let's start with an explanation of what is a decision table. Well, it is essentially a visual representation of a specific action which should be performed depending on a given conditions. Decision tables are one of the market standards for decisioning. Essentially, what you do in decision table is that you are describing all possible scenarios that might happen and the actions that should follow. To explain the use of decision tables, we will pick a use case of package delivery. Based on its size, weight and the distance that it's going to travel, we will decide its price of delivery, the time in which the package will be delivered and the carrier, the shipping company that is going to take care of the package delivery. Here we have one decision table split into two parts. One part is taking care of the conditions for the size, weight and the distance that the package is going to travel. The other one is deciding what will be the price, carrier and the delivery time for a specific combination of conditions. Let's say that for an example we have a package with the following information. Its size is 50 cubic centimeters, its weight is 50 grams and the distance that it's going to travel is 300 kilometers. This case falls exactly in our middle row where you see that the information matches exactly our conditions and the result is $40 for the price of delivery and the package will be delivered in 24 hours by the PPL. To slightly sum it up, every row in decision table represents a certain scenario, the combination of conditions that has to occur and what will be their result and every column represents a condition or result tied with a certain information. I will later on call them variables. For example, here with the size of a package. Here you can see how our decision table looks directly in decision rules. It's almost the same. Now let's talk about the input and output model used for decision table. Essentially, the structure of the data that I will be sending in and receiving back. In our case, the input is following package size, package weight and the distance. And the output will be price of delivery, time of delivery and a carrier. Here is how the input and output structure looks like in decision rules. Again, it's almost the same like my bullet points in the presentation. Now. Let's go into decision rules. Here we are at the dashboard of decision rules. I will click here on a create new rule and create a new sample rule. Now we are in the rule settings. And now I will set up the input and output model to match the model that I have in my presentation. I'll put in the input the package size, package weight, and the distance. And here in the output, I will put in the price of delivery, time of delivery and the carrier. I can add a new route simply by clicking here on the add route button. And if I want to, I can add a nested route by clicking here. And then I can also expand it and add another nested route. This is a really easy way how can I create the entire input and output structure. Another way of how you can create the input and output model is to switch to the JSON editor. For example, if you know the structure of the data that you will be sending in, you can simply erase the current one and paste the new one. Hit save and it will be automatically mapped. Now let's go into decision table designer to create a structure of decision table from my presentation. To add more conditions and the result columns, I can simply click here on a plus sign and select which variable from the input I want to use for the selected condition. I will use the package size, package weight and the distance. And I will also do the same thing on the result side by adding more result columns associated with the selected variables. 
In the case that I would need to, I can add another condition column even with the same variable as previously used to have multiple conditions on the same variable. Now I will start to add new rows and edit them into the form that I have in my presentation. You can see that by default, if I'm adding a new row, it is added as anything, meaning any data that is sent in will pass. But if I want to put it in the form that I have in my presentation, I will use the equal operator and fill out the values. Now let's go through the basic operators that I can use within my rules. For the packages, I will use the operator greater than or equal. Let's say that the packaging size has to be greater than or equal to 10 to fit in my conditions. And for the package weight, I can use the between operator, where I'm selecting the range of weights that I will accept in our case, from 20 to 250 grams. Another operator that I would like to show you is the in operator. So let's say that I will have a new information about the package, the country from which the package does come from. Therefore, I will create a new condition using the variable country. And here I will use the in operator. And what does the in operator? It gives me an option to create a list of values. Thanks to the in operator, I will let in only the packages coming from the UK, US and Germany. Different countries won't be allowed. Now let's focus for the moment on the result part of the rule. Because right now I'm using just simple equal operators. But I can use the decision rules to calculate the price of the delivery. I can use functions similar to those you know from Excel. To display the variables, I have to type a curly bracket. Now you see all the variables that I can use for the calculation of the delivery price. I will use the size of the package and multiply it by the package weight to create the price of delivery. If you want to copy a whole row, you can do that by clicking on these three dots and selecting copy. Now, since we have built the rules, let me show you how we can also test them. For the testing of the rules, we are using a test bench. We will fill it out uh, with the information about particular package and hit run. We immediately get the results and we can compare them with our expectations. Essentially, check if we have built the rule correctly. In the case that you already have your sample data, you can also switch to the JSON bench and insert your data to test the rule. That was enough regarding the rule testing for now. Let's get back to the result part of decision table and talk about the functions. Right now, I have just a simple multiplication of the distance and package weight, but I can introduce the minimum function to set a limit for the delivery price. Like in Excel, I will type min and the tool will guide me through the creation of the function. All I have to do is to hover over the typed min and see what structure should the function have? In this case, all I have to do is to separate different values by commas. Now, we can see that I have two results for the same input. If the package size will be equal to 70, the package weight to 750, and the distance greater than 500. First result will be the distance multiplied by the package weight, and the second one would be the same, but it's limited by the minimum function. 
Hence, it can be at maximum 1000. We can see that in a test bench, where I'm getting 375,000 and 1000. In the same manner, I can also use the maximum function to have the same results for both rows. In a case that I would like to use just the fourth row, I can deactivate the third one by clicking on the inactivate button. Last thing that I would like to show you is the debug mode within the test bench. By default, it's turned off. If you will turn it on, it will show you the rows used directly for your decisions and also the conditions that you didn't comply with. To sum this up, we have learned today what is a decision table, how to create one using basic operators and functions, and also how to test whether we've built it properly. Thank you for your attention and wish you a great day.